the junior, and Gregorio Goyo Vargas. Vargas is the most eligible 29-year-old bachelor in tiny Toluca, Mexico. Mayweather, six years younger, three inches taller, five inches more reach. They both weighed in at 130. Floyd enters at 139 and a half tonight. Vargas has gained 11 pounds since the weigh-in. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Jr. Goyo Vargas fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold. And now we're going to watch uh, Goya Vargas come into the. At boxing, amateur and pro, for more than 20 years. And he says he's kept his money and bought uh, rental properties in his hometown of Toluca, Mexico, and uh, he's going to go back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. But not before this effort to embarrass the widely ballyhooed Mayweather. And here comes Floyd Jr. That's his father. Yeah. Just yeah. over yeah. his yeah. right shoulder, yeah. screen yeah. left, yeah. as they enter the ring. Yeah. It's a business-like entrance in leather. Interesting sidelight. When Floyd Sr. went to the Boxing Commission yesterday, they asked him what color trunks he was wearing, his son was wearing, and in an embarrassed, almost hurt way, he said, I'm sorry, I don't know. That's how big the rift is between them outside of the ring and the gym. His new manager, James Prince, wants to make an imprint in boxing. Hi, Manuel. And to start off by grabbing some of the superstars in boxing. And Mayweather, I think, is just the beginning. I think you're going to see other of the our top champions also be uh, and bought up, so to say, by James Prince. Well, there's a rumor that he's about to sign a management deal with Mike Tyson as Tyson's existing deal with Shelly Finkel comes to a close. And uh, that'll be interesting to see. Mayweather has become good buddies with Tyson and trained in the, the same gym where Tyson trains now in Phoenix, Arizona. Here's a closer look, Larry. This is the longest layoff of his professional career. It should not bother him, although he did put on more weight than he usually does. Part of his deal with his new manager is he has started a new label called Filthy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a new goal, which is to fight anyone from 130 to 140 pounds. Starting with Prince Nassim Hamed, but he may have to wait a while. While you're watching the fight tonight, log on to HBO.com boxing. There you'll be able to score each round, 
and spend some time chatting with lightweight champion Paul Spadafora. Incidentally, if you were with us last Saturday night and you're wondering what was the outcome of the website question asking if fans wanted to see Prince Nassim Hamed win or lose, the answer is that 57% of voters on the website wanted to see Naz lose. So the other 43% got their way, and I'm betting that the next time around the results would be flip-flopped if we were to do it again. Let's go up to Michael Buffer now for the official introductions on this one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC a Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Dr. Luther Mack, Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Executive Director Mark Ratner, WBC Supervisor at ringside Robert Lee. Our four physicians in attendance are Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. Gino Signorino, and Dr. William Berlino. The timekeepers at the bell are James Cavett and Mike Lachella, and the three judges who will be scoring this bout on the 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, John Keane, and Daniel Vandevilla. And when the bell rings, working for the 160th time in a world title bout, your referee, Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on the heart and soul of boxing, HBO. Uh, let's get her! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold and black and weighing in at 130 pounds. His professional record stands at 47 contests with 40 victories and six losses with one draw. And 28 of those victories have come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen from Ciudad de Mexico, here is the number one ranked challenger in the world, the former featherweight world champion, Goyo Vargas. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, trimmed with red, and also weighing in at 130 pounds. He brings a perfect professional record to the ring, consisting of 22 bouts. 22 victories, including 17 knockouts. And he is mentioned by many as being among the best pound for pound in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen from Grand Rapids, Michigan, presenting their reigning and defending, undefeated WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. Let's go. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dress room. I'm cautioning you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Well, after watching uh, Diego Chico Corrales operate in the first fight and with the prospect of a fight with Mayweather looming later in the year adds a little bit of uh, extra interest in Mayweather's performance tonight. In Mayweather's last fight, he totally outclassed Carlos Arena of Puerto Rico. He steps out of the corner here and immediately shows Vargas his remarkable hand speed, firing left hands and landing two or three of them before that one's finally blocked. Now Floyd jabs. He started off leading with the left hook. And again, wings a left hook shot. The, the difference here is just speed. Even though Goyo is blocking Mayweather's punches, he cannot retaliate and be effective himself because he's just too slow. But he's able to defend himself to a certain degree, but he can't do anything effective on the offensive method because of the speed factor. Mayweather won the world title. 
from Genaro Hernandez. There were some in the sport who thought he was being rushed, that he was in too quickly against Hernandez. Within a couple of rounds, he dispelled that notion as he thoroughly outclassed Hernandez en route to taking the championship. He hasn't really been threatened at any time in his professional career. Well, the last time I saw him have a real rough fight myself person was August Sanchez. <laughs> In the amateurs. In the amateurs, that's true. It was a two good fights that I saw him fight. Augie Sanchez, but, who's a local Las Vegas kid, incidentally. Well, the biggest difference is right here is just his speed element is just too much for these professional fighters. In the amateurs, it was a big factor, but still, he had fighters who were much faster. But uh, right now, at this stage right here, the speed is just going to be the factor in this fight. It's simply one word. Vargas manages to stick her right hand to the body. Vargas continues to block Mayweather's left hook with his right hand. Vargas's defense is, is very intelligent. He knows that he cannot cope with the speed of Mayweather. So as soon as he sees Mayweather starting to approach with the flyly punches, he just merely puts both his hands up for whatever. Because like a lot of brilliant young stars who can do most of what they want to in the ring, Mayweather doesn't throw to the body all that much. No, he's not a body puncher, and the fact that Vargas is not a very good upper body movement fighter himself. He doesn't move his body too much. Vargas so is it, able to so land he, a counter left hand. He basically just covered, puts his hands up to protect himself. But it's going to be very interesting, though, at this point. I'm kind of surprised that Mayweather seemingly have not been able to figure out how to penetrate through the defense of Vargas. And that's, that's mainly attributed to the fact that he's not that much of an effective body puncher. That's right. And you can see the calm professionalism of Vargas in the face of all this. I mean, it, it, he's been in against quicker fighters before. That's true. And at this stage, he's given Mayweather a few problems, mainly because of Mayweather's inability to hit him. Now, when we go to Goya Vargas' corner, if they speak Spanish, our interpreter is Ray Torres. When you hook it up here, keep blocking it here. When you hook up here, let's bring it up here. When you hook up the bang, bring it right down here. Hoop up here and break it down here. Hey, big Floyd Mayweather Sr. is giving his son some good advice. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Good. Hey, a little bit more pressure, eh, senor? Mira. Let's hey, put a little more pressure on him. No tiene rapidez. He's okay. not that fast. Este, estás, no estás mal tú. You know, you're not bad. You do, you're doing okay. You okay. got to punch luego, first. No Beat him to the punch. Don't lower your punches okay. because he's going to get you. You're okay. Everything's fine. You, you hit him with a good, real body shot. Mm. Accentuate the positive or the little positive for Vargas in the corner of Mayweather, his father telling him, go to the body and then go upstairs with that kind of hook body punch hook combination. That was the good advice you were referring to, Emmanuel? Yes, what his father's telling him, throw the punch to the head first to make him take his elbows up and then just hit him to the body because he won't be able to see it. But Vargas is, is, is fighting a good fight in the fact he's picking his punches off and if he attacks Mayweather after blocking Mayweather's punches, I think he would be more effective than if he leads. Right, step back, step back. After Mayweather finishes his punches off and his body's in an upright position, Whereas Vargas can come back, I think, and it'll be much safer for him at that time to attack also. There's a red spot on the bridge of Vargas's nose. That good example right there. He blocked the punch and then punched after blocking the punch instead of trying to lead first. Vargas still picking off a lot of Mayweather's shots with his hands, but as Emmanuel Stewart pointed out in round one, unable to fire back while being occupied defensively. And incidentally, that's Vargas's father who speaks to him between rounds in the corner. The language barrier robs us of the chance to listen to Joe Goosen, one of the more entertaining corner by corner, or uh, <laughs> round by round trainers in the sport. Definitely. <laughs> that's once again a sample of speed. He cannot be that effective offensive. But Mayweather's not able to, to penetrate, which is, is interesting. And he still is not following instructions of his father, which is to punch to the head first to make him take his arms up, and then to punch to the body. Vargas trying to stick the left hand to the body, now tries it again. Obviously, Vargas hoping to get to the body a little bit in the early rounds and maybe rob Mayweather 
of some of the foot speeds. Mayweather's changing his style now. He's trying to lean in closer where he, he can minimize the amount of time that Vargas can have to time his punches. He's trying to lean in and punch at a much shorter distance. Now Vargas becomes the stalker and backs Mayweather against the ropes and tries to do it again. Latin American segment of the crowd chanting Goyo, Goyo, Goyo. Trying to give Vargas a little incentive. Mayweather with the right hand lead blocked. Left hook is blocked. And if you notice Mayweather, even though he moves as if he's a flashy boxer, he doesn't really box. He very seldom shoots effective jabs. He basically pauses with the jab and loads up with flurries and combinations of punches. But he doesn't really move around boxing. He has the movements of a boxer, but he doesn't box. I think his most effective punch to get to the is the right hand lead. That's but that's another punch that's he has not been able to land here in the first two rounds against Goya Vargas. <laughs> I think the empty seats here are enjoying this fight more than anybody so far. When, when you get him up close to the ropes, hit him on the body. The body is with it. Especially with the right hand, you have to hit him. Don't fake it, throw it. So far, Vargas, uh, excuse me, Mayweather has been very good with his speed avoiding punches. He's been less successful taking the offense, using any aggression to make something happen so far. He's a very bright young man. Maybe he'll have something figured out soon. I Round think, three begins. Go ahead, Emmanuel. I think it would be effective if Mayweather would start fighting Vargas a little closer because even though Vargas is a smaller fighter, his punches are much wider and he has such a loop room. And if he would fight him at a much closer range, I think he would catch him while he's throwing a wide punch. And I think he's trying to close the distance right now. Yes, I think he needs to settle in and fight him a lot closer. He has stepped in a half a step and now tries to begin reaching for Vargas's body. Well, I, I just don't see that Mayweather wants to, to get in close at all. I think he wants to avoid contact. That's the type of fighter he is. That's he uses speed as his big advantage so that he doesn't get hit. His first priority is not to get hit. You heard that the name of the game is hit and don't be hit. His priority is don't be hit and then hit. Go all in, punch your way out. Well, I can definitely punch say this. Out. It's been a much more difficult fight than I think he is expected and has prepared for. Right hand lead lands there. Well, he found something right there. But he still has not been able to land a very devastating punch. That was more of a punch that the arm guy punch. don't see yet, but it, but it doesn't knock you down or knock you out. Yeah, just an arm punch. It's, yes. At this point, he's not been But he may have to satisfy himself with that for a while. Well, I, the fact that this man is closing the gap on him and is being more effective and being very physical when he gets inside on him means that he's going to have to find some method of doing something different. Otherwise, the fight he will win the fight, probably, but he may not have the impressive victory and performance that he's looking for. Emmanuel, that's a good hard right hand counter by Vargas as he slipped it over the top of Mayweather's right hand. That's true. You've said about Lennox Lewis that. To really be an outstanding champion, you have to be passionate and aggressive. Do you see either or both of those qualities in Mayweather? Mayweather right now is having, to me, the first solid fight that I've seen fight as a professional, which I'm surprised to some degree that the performance of Vargas. But at this stage right now, I've saw tremendous speed, tremendous natural talent. But the other qualities, I don't think he's put, been put a te to, to the test where he could actually be rated in those areas. a right hand lead that lands over the top right, and this, right. this is the way I would like to see him fight more of. even though he's got you know better boxing skills I think I would have him to fight him a little closer because I think his punches would get off much faster and he would catch Vargas while he's in the process of trying to deliver a punch. well to a certain degree you would say as long as he's not really serious about his jab why box 
He could be a tremendous boxer. He would commit to using his jab as a weapon. This Monday, tune in for another edition of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, a profile of Jeanette Lee, the black widow of billiards. She's unique, she's sexy, it says so right here, and a main reason why women's pool is doing so well. Also, we'll show you a high school basketball player who elbowed another player in the face during a game and was sentenced to five years in jail. You decide, was this fair? Real Sports, where nothing is out of bounds. His elbow. Estil. Apparently, there is a cut Richard, Richard, high, here. high on the forehead an elbow. Uh, of Vargas. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me keep working on it a little bit. Hablando. El protector prepara lo. Joe Goosen claiming it came from an elbow. And Joe Goosen making sure that referee Richard Steele is aware of his opinion. Now round four begins. Floyd Mayweather Jr. landed 14 out of 50 punches by CompuBox numbers in round three. Vargas 10 out of, out of 33. Mayweather 17 of 74 in the jab department, as Emmanuel Stewart told you. More often than not, he paused with the jab rather than sticking it in there with authority. There's a good quick left hook by Mayweather, partially blocked by Vargas. Vargas chasing Mayweather to the corner, trying to get to the body. Mayweather hits him with the right hand inside. I think Vargas would like to make it a brawl if he could, uh, if he could get at Mayweather. He's trying to make it a brawl because his speed is just so slow. But at this stage right now, I don't think that Mayweather's hurt him at all in the entire fight. In between rounds, he seemed to be extremely relaxed, very comfortable. And I think it has to make it being possibly a long fight for Mayweather. Also, he's throwing one punch at a time. Uh, I know. Well, he can't get a combination because the man's defense is up. <laughs> well, but he doesn't want to commit to it. He doesn't no. want to stand in there and commit. And the blood begins flowing from that cut near the top of Vargas's left temple. Cut is actually behind the temple, I believe, in the hairline. It's not a threat to his vision. Shouldn't be. No, no. Shouldn't be a factor in the fight. Good body punch. Rare body punch by Mayweather. Like a lot of fighters who are super fast on their feet, Floyd Mayweather often throws punches without having his feet set. That's true. He seems to be settling down now and fighting a much better fight now and much more relaxed. No holding. Break. Choosing to say hello to Emmanuel Stewart between punches there. <laughs> Did he say anything beyond hello, Manny? <laughs> Just a kind of happy to see you here. When did you yeah. first see him with a pair of gloves on, Manny? I think he was about six years old. But it, he's, he's probably been boxing about three years or four years before that. <laughs> saw Floyd land two quick right hands. And now Vargas gets him where he wants him. He looks like he's got him where Mayweather wants him. <laughs> yeah, but he's not effective right now, but it's, it's good for the crowd. Well, and it gives Vargas a chance to land a few cheap body shots. Oh, yeah, this is his fight right here. And help create the mentality of a brawl. The more <laughs> rapid he can get Mayweather to be, Quick left hand by Mayweather as Vargas was lunging in. Good round, good round. Yeah, we talking. Yeah, we have a good time. All right, let's give him some water. Okay. No más sangre. Okay. Okay, go on. It's me for the soga. Goyo, you, you, you're better at the rope, so get him up against the rope than punch him. You've got to throw punches on top. Step back and then hit him. Okay. 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 
question here is whether he's willing to invest to break down Vargas or he's going to be content to go the distance with an easy win. Round five begins. Harold, how did you score the first four? <laughs> Jim Hatch is a no-brainer. Four to nothing. 40 to 36. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, I don't care. I think this kid's terrific. He's hitting him with everything but the stool. I, I mean, if he ain't breaking him down, the referee must be hitting Goyo Vargas because Floyd's whacking him with lead rights, doing whatever he has to do, controlling the ring, hitting him with terrific left hooks, and Goyo Vargas can't touch him. It's terrific a left hooks? Terrific left hooks, Jim. Terrific a, left hooks? Terrific left hooks. This is a good fight for Floyd Mayweather. All right. Thank you, Harold. I'm glad somebody is enjoying this. <laughs> right hand over the top. Left hand from underneath. Boy, when you're young and you, you've got the speed and the reflexes of a cheetah, you can get away with stuff. That was a Prince Nassim punch. Like throwing a, an uppercut from eight feet away. It's the biggest difference is just speed. There's just too much speed on Mayweather's part for him. But it's a good fight. Slip for room. Richard Steele properly ruling that a slip. And still the moisture is there, incidentally, in the same spot on the paint. But this time Floyd skips over it. See Vargas hammering to the body whenever he gets a chance. Hoping to take some of Floyd's legs away. Now Mayweather is standing flat-footed. Maybe he thinks that Vargas is tiring a little bit. This is where I would like to see him fight more. Because? E even though he's close, I think his hand speed is too much. Uh, and he would catch him with a punch much better than the punches that he's. When he shoots his right hand leads, there are punches that can land and get points, but they are not having that much power. And I thought if he would fight at a closer range right here, he would eventually land and would catch him with a power punch. Otherwise, I think the fight's going to end up going to 12 round position. There may be a small trickle of blood from one of Floyd Mayweather's nostrils. Either that or he's picked up blood on his face from Vargas' cut. Mayweather mixing in a left hand to the body in that four punch flurry as he came out of the corner. I think Floyd's bleeding from the right nostril. He's, he's bleeding from the nose. Probably in the toughest professional fight that he's had in his career. Not so tough that he isn't smiling in there from time to time about the way things are going, but. Well, well he's got control, and actually has given him a chance to show more of his talents, I think, in this type of a fight, and the longer that it goes. And Floyd looks over and winks at Emmanuel Stewart as if to indicate that he enjoyed round five. My nose, my nose dry. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. When you get him up against the rope, don't let him out. Don't let him You understand? Keep him there. Inside it, dentro of the Okay. Don't let him move out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're getting too careless, and you're not hitting him. You, you got to make sure that you cover yourself so he doesn't hit you. You're okay. It's a good fight. Don't get tired. The other guy's tired. In round five, by CompuBox numbers, Vargas landed more power shots than Mayweather. Power shots meaning anything other than a jab. Hooks, crosses, uppercuts, and body shots all qualify in the CompuBox language as power shots. Vargas landing 13 to Mayweather's 10 in the fifth. Nevertheless, Floyd continues to control the fight with his speed and his footwork. Emmanuel Stewart, you've been quoted as saying that you train Prince Nassim with an eye down the road toward a possible huge showdown fight with Floyd Mayweather. You see Floyd switching southpaw here, as he might do against Naz's southpaw stance. What would your Prince Nassim game plan be against Floyd? Well, I don't think he would switch with Nassim because Nassim is too dangerous of a puncher. He can take risks with this fighter because the guy's slow and he can get away with things. And actually, Floyd seemingly is enjoying himself at the fight now because it's turned out to be a good fight in terms of the crowd appeal, but he knows that he still has too much speed. 
for Vargas, so he's seemingly enjoying himself now. But Would Naz just Na try to walk Na him down? Well, Nassim Ahmed himself has good hands speed, but more devastating single punching power. But maybe Floyd has more speed altogether in combinations, but not as much power. It would be a very interesting fight. And as Naz is learning to shorten up his punches more at this stage and keep his balance, it means that if they ever fight, maybe down the road in a year or two, it would be a very exciting fight. It would be a lot of speed and a lot of power. Vargas still trying to get to Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s body midway through the sixth round. Floyd's had a couple of good flurries here in the sixth. And a good left hook to the body there. None of his punches seemingly are hurting Vargas, so he's landing a lot of punches, but from the expression I can get on Vargas' face, there he knows that he's possibly losing on points, but he's not being physically hurt. And I believe as the fight goes on, he's going to start fighting a little bit more because his confidence is going to be up to the point where he believes he can't be hurt that much. Tell me, Jim, is, is Vargas the first fighter we've seen with a website on his trunks? Uh, he's the first Mexican fighter we've seen with a website <laughs> on his trunks. How's that? <laughs> All right. Well, maybe he'll get knocked on his website uh, tonight, but Mayweather is going to have to commit some, with some passion to try to make it happen. Vargas trying to give Mayweather a little straight right hand lead action of his own. Manages to corner Mayweather for the moment. And wails away to the body. that he didn't see. Six, seven, eight. Well, he went down on his website. <laughs> <laughs> when you finally go to the body, you together. often get you results you're not expecting. Well, I, I think the punch was, uh, the punch exploded. He, he never I saw the punch coming and serve was effective. But doing it this round here, I don't think it's going to have any. You're okay. Gotcha. I think you got you well. going into the next round, I don't think the body punch is going to have any lasting effect. The same way, you got to fight him the same way. Easy enough for you to say, Emmanuel. <laughs> you want to win? As it was winding down, they were in a scuffle on the break on the ropes and there's the punch right there in the solar plexus. As I noted before, when Vargas has Mayweather on the ropes, he's got Mayweather where Mayweather wants him because he's got him at close quarters and he can hit him with punches he may not see. That's because once Mayweather has much faster hands and better coordination in course. Right hand lands for Mayweather. Vargas kind of grinning at him. And Emmanuel Stewart pointed out in the last round, Mayweather not really hurting him with head punches. But when he fired that left hook to the body and got a perfect placement on it, it was enough to score the knockdown. The head punches, he, he's, he's prepared for the most effective head punch that he's landed is basically the jab. Because Vargas is leaning in forward now as he picks the punches off so he can be in a better position when he executes himself. In the early part of the fight, he was standing back blocking the punches, but he's trying to land in where his head and his hands will be closer to Mayweather after he finishes up. Well, in recent weeks, we've gotten some great illustrations of the importance of body punching. Prince Nassim loosening Guiani Bungu up with early body punches last week. Oscar De La Hoya knocking out Daryl Coley with a body punch. Felix Trinidad stopping David Reed's movement and ultimately breaking him down with vicious punishment to the body. The more young fighters learn to do it, the better they get. Now, I feel we've seen more of that since Roy Jones so knocked out Virgil Hill. Hill. Knocked out Virgil Hill with that crushing shot uh, a couple years ago. Midway through round seven, Floyd Mayweather Jr. thoroughly in control, but Goyo Vargas able to show his vast experience and professionalism by eking out ways here and there 
to stay in the fight. Boyd busting through the guard with his right hand lead. Those punches are very flashy, but they're not as effective as the, as the shorter punches are because Vargas can see the punches coming. And when you see a punch coming, your muscles and your nervous system prepares to handle it. It's, it looks good, but it's the punch, it's a short punch that you don't see much as the body punch that landed the other round, which is the most effective. And of course, often the crowd will ooh and da ah on punches that are completely blocked or partially blocked. And not only blocked, but a lot of times that's what you bust your hands up on a lot of those type punches also because you're landing more on your fingers instead of on the knuckles. Floyd has never complained about hand problems in his career. Vargas leaning against Floyd and trying to pound away to the body, giving Mayweather the kind of chance he got in the last round when he knocked Vargas down with a body shot. But I think Gregorio... Good body punch. Good. There, there you go. Left hand to the body again by Mayweather. This is what I would say. I would like to, even though it's a gamble, I would try to have him fight with him, and I think his punching pad would be more effective here. This is one of the few real exchanges I've seen Mayweather in in any fight. Yeah. Mayweather hugging Vargas as if to say thank you for fighting with me. Okay. Very good, Boyle. Stop. Well, Larry, we talked about the possibility of a Mayweather fight with Prince Nassim Ahmed. Of course, Naz holds his title at 126 pounds. Who are some of the other top 130-pound fighters? Well, here we see Corrales and Mayweather, the top of the class now. Garcia, who had uh, lost to Corrales, uh, still has to be considered one of the elites. Joel Casamayor, the Cuban gold medalist, unbeaten as a pro. Frietas is a newcomer. He's a knockout sensation from Brazil. Chavez actually will be the mandatory challenger for Mayweather after this fight, should he win it. It's been a fight, not a particularly close one, but Goya Vargas has hung in and tried to dish it out where he could against Floyd Mayweather Jr. And Mayweather has occasionally relished the chance to trade with Vargas and demonstrate his blinding hand speed. Harold Letterman still enthralled with the way Mayweather is fighting. Cruising to a big lead over Vargas, and we suspect that's true on the other scorecards as well. Between rounds, a round and a half ago after Vargas was knocked down on a body shot from Mayweather. You heard Joe Goosen ask him, do you want to continue? Although Vargas has never been in any real serious trouble. There is uh, a welt along the right eye of Mayweather. I don't think I've seen him uh, with that sort of damage before. skills apparent on the double left hook moments ago landing to the body and the head Mayweather's boxing skills and speed right now is what's really winning the fight and it, it, and he but he can't hurt Vargas as much as he would like what would a Mayweather Corrales fight look like Emmanuel uh, Mayweather Corrales fight would be a very interesting fight because Corrales is going to put tremendous pressure and I don't know if Mayweather would be able to handle pressure coming from a tall fighter which, which is up on top over him. And the fact that Corrales doesn't punch long punches where you can counter punch. He waits until he's right on you and you normally have made your defense motions and he still hasn't punched. And when he does punch, it's going to be almost too close. Yeah, but one thing about uh, get out. Corrales is he can be hit. He gets hit. He's, op he's open for some shots and he'll get hit by Mayweather. I don't know that Mayweather can, can hurt him. But that's got to be a factor going the other way. Mayweather can hit him, but Mayweather's not that much of a devastating one-punch fighter. And that's, that's going to make a difference. I think Corrales is going to be a very tough fight, in particular with his height. Off what we've seen in the last six months, you might suspect that Corrales is the harder puncher. Well, I don't, I don't suspect it. I think it's perfectly apparent. He stands flat-footed. He's right in there. He throws his punches correctly. Very short. Gets good punches. leverage on them. 
He commits to him. He wants to hurt the other guy. He doesn't want to outpoint him. To some degree, is a version of Felix Trinidad, to some degree. The fact that being as tall as he is, he fights with his hand so high, and all of his punches are very active punches with very little gap. Was that a, a Texas two-step round, or was it some other dance uh, I haven't heard of? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I want to do that. Open them up. All right. Breathe through your mouth. Breathe in deep, let us slow. See, the bleeding is stopped already. Good deal. All right, we got four rounds to go. You got to do it now. Let's give him some water. Yeah, royal. It's not a scientific, it's a scientific. You just got to go. You just got to go. Okay. Royal Vargas is a real professional. And although he himself admits that the highlight of his career already happened years ago when he won a featherweight title and that he is near retirement he's fighting with with the fierce pride of a profession and it's got to be frustrating he's in a situation where the speed he knows is too much for him and his skill but he's doing all that he can to win the fight and has never given up hope still he's really making every effort that he can still to win this fight and who knows what would happen later on in the fight when you have a fight of this type, and the fact that he's getting closer to Mayweather now. Has he won a round yet, Harold? No, Jim. I got an 8 to nothing. 80 to 71, Floyd Mayweather. I tell you, Jim, you know, the judges look for four things, and he's doing all four. Well, look at this, Harold. Maybe Vargas can win a round here. As Mayweather elects to hold his hands in front of his face and allow Vargas to pound away at the rib cage and the elbows. Vargas trying to put Mayweather to the test along the ropes. Floyd looking to pick a shot in here. Now, now expect Mayweather. Expect Mayweather to explode after this himself. Uh, he's hoping to get Vargas to wear himself out. That's correct. Right here. Vargas gets in a left hook upstairs. Mayweather uh -oh. retaliates with a right uppercut. Uh -oh. And there's a lead right hand and a right hand to the body by Vargas. And now here it comes. Yes. Vargas stopped throwing punches and Mayweather flurries. And now here comes Goyo. My goodness, a fight broke out. excitement I've ever seen in a Floyd Mayweather fight. Yes, it is. I've been enjoying it as a fan. <laughs> Absolutely. So this may round. be Vargas's last stand, great but he's round. given us great something round. by which to judge Floyd. How about the willing enthusiasm of Agoya Vargas, who comes to work and tries to make a fight, though outgunned, and forces Floyd Mayweather to be good. <laughs> I don't know if Vargas won that round, but I'm going to give it to him on general principles. Yes, you have to. I think Floyd, leaning over here, wanted me to know that it was he who's making the fight and not <laughs> Boyo Vargas. It's turned out to be quite a fight. Junior, when you got it again, you cover yourself right hand, left hook to the body, okay? Step to the left. All right, you, you got to You won that round. That was clear. You got balls. It was only. Okay. You gotta go. Okay. You gotta hit him. This is this is it. 
El protector ya listo. Here's Vargas. Throws a nice left hand over Mayweather's glove. This may be the last stand of a tough, smart, veteran fighter trying to get back into the fight or at least leave a few marks on Mayweather to know he's been in a fight. And something happened in, the, in Vargas's corner I should uh, bring your att attention to, which is that he told his corner that he was having some problems with his legs. He raised his legs to get a rub down. What do you think that means, Emmanuel? Well, that was a real brutal round, each other, and I don't know what effect it may have had on him, but I think Mayweather, even though it was a maybe a round that you could have given to Vargas, I would say that the momentum should have been better for Mayweather because I thought that he fought a much smarter strategy by letting Vargas expand himself and open up afterwards. But you know the round could have went either way, but I think going down the stretch, I think that Vargas is going to tire, but who can tell? In round nine, they landed a combined 62 punches by CompuBox estimation, 60 of them power shots. I'd be surprised if you see another rally in the last three rounds by Vargas to match what he was able to do in round nine. And Mayweather back up and moving on his feet now as the 10th round progresses toward its midpoint. Which I think is smart because going down the stretch, Footwork usually bothers a fighter if he's not that good with his feet unless he's just tired. Well, Floyd certainly doesn't have to stand in the corner and trade shots with Goya no, Vargas no, unless no. he wants to. No, he can box now. I think he's taking a lot of energy out of him, and I think his youth and speed will carry him down the stretch where he should finish up very strong now. training a young talent like Floyd Mayweather how do you get him not to be knockout conscious I mean do you think this kid is perfectly satisfied to coast to a 12 round victory here I think he's going to be satisfied I think he's settling and realize that he's had a difficult fight and for the, for the most part he's going to be glad <laughs> to see the trap round on him too this is a much rougher fight than he ever expected I think he should use his feet work just the last round or two because it's very difficult for a lot of fighters to twist and turn and pivot a lot when they're tired if they're not very gifted with their feet. Floyd switches to a southpaw stance for the second time in the fight. Third time, he says. Thank you for the correction, <laughs> Floyd. Thanks for the correction. <laughs> Maybe I should give yeah. him my headset yes. so he can do it's the blow-by-blow like blow as well. And, and while he's boxing. Right hand by Mayweather, right down the pipe. Come on, here. Eleven. Eleven. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Yeah. Eleven round, baby. Eleven. Eleven. Come on. Okay. I want. I want. I want. I want a big round this round. How you feel? Okay, hey, give, give me a big round this round. Turn it on. Like the last couple of rounds back, give me a big round, okay? I'm going. All right, we got two rounds to go. That's all we got. You won the last two. Let's go for it. You got to throw a lot of punches, and you got to be aggressive. He doesn't want to fight anymore. He's very tired. You got to use that rhythm and the pressure. As puntos, as puntos, as puntos. Okay? Vargas still searching right, and finding Mayweather in that case. That left hand excited the crowd, and you heard Vargas's dad asking him for what might be impossible, which is big activity and mucho business in the last two rounds against Mayweather. Well, if both fighters listen to their fathers, we'll have a hell of a round. <laughs> That's right. Both fathers will say they want a big round. But I'm, I'm very surprised at Vargas. He's impressed me with his stamina, and it seems like he's got into a groove right now where he hasn't changed. See, one, two. Where's the three, four? He doesn't want to stand in there for the three, four. Floyd Mayweather is a very fast, talented fighter, but not a really big puncher. Right, 
Mayweather just picking his shots now as Vargas walks to him. I think Mayweather's fighting the perfect fight now at this stage. Since he realizes he's not going to knock him out, the best thing to do is keep punching and moving all the time. You think fans want to see this kind of almost perfection from a fighter like Mayweather? You know, especially after the rounds they've had a couple of rounds back. <laughs> they want to go back to those days. But, you know, oftentimes when a guy starts boxing and another guy gets tired, he can catch him with a clean punch that he doesn't expect and can have more power and effect on that than when they're standing toe to toe. Because he's not expecting, his mind is so preoccupied at chasing after him, and then he gets hit with a punch and he's not expecting it. But your point is well taken, Larry. Fans like blood and guts. They appreciate what Roy Jones does, but they're in love with Tommy Hearns. Well, it's not just right, blood and guts. Back. It's it's stand and deliver sometimes. It's show passion. It's to want to complete your work in there, uh, whatever it turns out to be. Double right hand by Floyd Mayweather Jr. Misses with the left hook. It's always nice to see a young fighter try to finish combinations with the left hook. Mayweather using his feet now to be sure as we come to the closing seconds of the 11th round. The scattered occasional boo echoing through the arena here as some fans want to see more action like they saw in the ninth and 10th rounds. Definitely, I would like to see more action that way, but if I was for maybe this one, I would like them to keep fighting the way that he's fighting. <laughs> you got to go out here, man, and flurry. I don't care if you. Uh, the last and final round. I'll do it for you, then. Okay. You, okay. You gotta do it. Though, I love man. you, man. I'll do it for you. Okay. This is the last and final round. It's the last round. You got to gamble. You got to go and throw punches. Last round, we told you. Let's get the mouthpiece in there. Let's go. We got one chance. There's no more secret. The, the fight is not that wide open. It's close. Interested spectator, Diego Chico Corrales. Two developments uh, in the corner. One, Mayweather is shaking his right hand as though he may have heard it. And secondly, his father whispered something in his ear about what he wanted. And whatever their rift is outside the ring, Junior said, I'll try to do it for you, Dad. I think that was beautiful. This fight may be the fight that can help bring them two back together, believe it or not. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it through 11? Okay, Jim. I got a 10 to 1, 109, 99 Floyd Mayweather Jr. I agree with Larry on that ninth round. I thought definitely Goyo deserved that because he hammered him out of ropes. But, you know, good ring generalship, good punching like that, good defense by Floyd. I mean, he's doing all the things that the judges really watch, and he should be winning this fight handily. Still throwing the right hand. Yes, he's throwing it, but not with a lot of power. Slapping with yes, it. Yeah, he's throwing it. But I, I think he has hurt his right hand. But he's fighting a very smart fight, and I think this fight will make him grow up and become a complete fighter much more than those other fights Why? he's had in the past. Because he's been challenged for the first time, he's been hit, I think, and he's had to extend himself while he's tired. I don't think he's ever been in this state physically where he's been exhausted and still has had to continue the fight. And it's this been 12 rounds with a real pro, a quality professional fighter who knows what he's doing in there and who understood a little of how to try to compensate for his physical disadvantages against Floyd. That's correct. Not having the speed to compensate, but he did other things. And I think as a result of this, Floyd has grown and possibly Wait, his back, relationship with his father may improve a lot after this fight because he's been in a pretty rough fight here and his father is one of the things that he had to look to to help him get advice and to try to, in this case, survive. 
in 20 seconds or less because we're in the last minute of the fight. When you see a fighter walk into your gym with his dad, Emmanuel, do you say to yourself, that's good because he has the backing and support of a family member, or that's bad because the dad is likely to be living through the sun for vicarious deals? In most cases, the dad is living through the sun. I have some exceptional cases. I have one of my kids in Detroit, Ken and Octavia Law, whose dad is one of my biggest assets. But in most of the cases, the dad's a use of problem. 45 seconds to go. A decision rather than a knockout, very likely, as Floyd Mayweather comes down the stretch against Gregorio Vargas, a fight in which you might conceivably have scored every round for Mayweather, but nevertheless, a test of his overall professionalism and the chance to show off all of his varied skills against a guy who knows how to fight. Having said that, he doesn't look like any $12 million fighter to me. He and his supporters will dispute. Joe Goosen seeming to ask his fighter, why did you fight the 12th round that way? I told you you needed a knockout to win. But thinking about a knockout against Floyd Mayweather Jr. and getting one are two entirely different things. And in what might be seen as evidence that Vargas is ready to retire from the ring, his handlers elect to carry him around after he has taken an obvious shellacking from Floyd Mayweather. Harold, how'd you score through 12? Well, Jim, almost perfect, but not quite. 119, 108, 11 rounds to one for Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, you got to give him that extra point for round six for the knockdown. Goyo Vargas definitely went round nine on my card. Uh, but, you know, as I, I started to say before, uh, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, good defense. It was all Floyd Mayweather. He deserves to win this fight by a wide margin. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. John Keane and Daniel Vandevila scored the bout 119 to 108. Chuck Jampa scores at 118 to 109 for the winner and still the undefeated champion, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. So Mayweather remains unbeaten, as did another 130-pound titleist earlier this evening, Diego Chico Corrales. Big smile on the face of Floyd Mayweather Sr., who has been through some rough times, having been dismissed, more or less, by his son as manager. Actually, Floyd Jr. said to us yesterday, get this straight, my dad was never really my manager. But most of the boxing world saw him that way. Nevertheless, Business upheaval and change leads to no diminution of skills in the ring, and Floyd Jr. cruises to a unanimous decision victory. Final punch stat numbers will show Floyd Jr.'s punching accuracy as he landed 42% of his overall punch output, throwing more than Vargas, landing more than Vargas, landing at a higher percentage rate, and by and large, landing the more effective blows throughout the fight. And Larry Merchant stands by with Floyd Mayweather Jr. in the ring. Larry Merchant. All right, thank you, guys. Floyd, congratulations. More difficult fight than you anticipated? Oh, not at all. I knew Goyo Vargas was a, a tough opponent, ex-champion. But first of all, I want to thank God for this victory. And um, thank Team Mayweather and thank Grant. Did you hurt your hand somewhere late in the fight? To be honest, I came to this fight with um, a messed up right hand. But I didn't want to have no excuse to... Uh, backing out because I'm a true champion and I come to fight. And I come to was it bothering you more in the late rounds than the early rounds? Because you started to shake it. Early rounds, it really wasn't bothering me too much. But around the, the sixth round started hurting me, but I still was throwing it. You know, I wanted to go out there and put on a good show and show how a true champion fights. Ninth round, you stood and exchanged. 
with Vargas a lot. Why? Did you want to take him out? Did you want to give the crowd a show? Give us your explanation. I wanted to show the, you know, the crowd that I can't fight in the inside a little bit and um, you know, working on defense. I need to go back home and work on some defense with my father, talk over some things with him and um, get things ready for my next fight. Before the last round, your dad whispered something in your ear and you say, I'll do, try it for you, dad. What did he say? He said, um, give, me a, give me a strong 12th round if you can. And I said, Daddy, I'm going to try to give it all that I can. You know, I love you, and uh, I know you're behind me 100%. All right, there's no secret that uh, you and your dad have had your differences outside of the ring. Did everything work inside of the ring, and can, can you work together inside of the ring and maybe repair things outside of the ring? Well, everything that happened on the outside of the ring was hearsay. I mean, I love my father more. I always love my father, and I always want my dad to be my trainer. I always want my dad to support me 100%, no matter what he says. I love my father. Give us your rating of this fight, Dad. I think it was a very, very good fight for, uh, you know, being laid off six months and, um, you know, and uh, not really having the right spine that we really need. But, I mean, I thought he put on a tremendous job. I think he threw a lot of punches. And, and like he said, about the um, about his uh, defense, you know, he's been off a little bit, so, you know, he got to hit a little bit more than anticipated, but, you know, we're going to go to the gym. We're going to get it all together. It's no problem. <laughs> is, is this where it's now the most fun for you in the ring and in the gym because that's where you are close? Well, this is my son. In regards to whatever's said in the paper, uh, in the media, around the world, this is my son. I love it. My blood run through this man. And like I said, and his blood run through me. I mean... We may have different, everybody gonna have different. That's life. Nobody is perfect. He's young. To me right now, he's young. Right now to me, he's making big mistakes. But, hey, we all make mistakes. I made them, he's gonna make them. Sometimes we pay more than the other guy. So, you know, I just hope some kind of way, and I pray that, hey, that everything will work out for him. But. This is my son. I love him. And we're going to be together forever. Just one last thing. Did you watch Corrales, Corrales fight? Give us your thoughts about him and about meeting him in a big showdown fight perhaps later this year. Well, I'm looking forward to fighting Diego Corrales in the future. You know, hopefully um, we, can, we can build that fight up and uh, me and him can fight and unify the titles. And um, I'm looking forward to fighting the WBA Junior Lightweight Champion next. Then after that, me and Corrales can fight to unify the titles. Thank you very much, senior and junior. Back to you, Jim and Evander. All right. Uh, well, not Evander, but Emmanuel. He is maybe the uh, two-time heavyweight champion of trainers, and he trains the guy who beat Evander Holyfield twice. Emmanuel, we need only to see the tight shot of those two faces to see the stress that these two men are undergoing as they try to change their relationship to something different than it's been in the past. Tonight may have been a big step forward. I think tonight was not only a good fight, but the fight, I think, brought the two together because I think that he realized he needed his dad. And I think Mayweather grew from the fight himself as a boxer, but I think his dad and he would be much, much closer. I, I knew eventually the riff would end and they would be back together because it was too strong a bond they had for them to ever be separated. I know it was just going to be a matter of time, but I think tonight's fight and performance would make that time be a lot shorter. And, and, and while the father as trainer thing isn't always a great idea, he's been a good trainer for his son because he's an objective critic. He's a good trainer, but also a good father. It's a very warm relationship. And I think Mayweather Jr., he's just young. He's a very young kid, as Larry said earlier. And he's just, you know, he's never been exposed to nothing. Like, and all of a sudden, he's a superstar champion. He's got multi-million dollar rap singers all involved after him. He's become a star. He's got jewelry. And, and he's became bigger in other areas than he is as a boxer, I think. And I think looking at this arena tonight should make him realize that being a champion, being a good boxer, and being a superstar is different. And I think tonight he should realize that, that he has a lot to go to become a superstar, but he's on his way. And, and Manny, you could be a superstar expert commentator if you ever get tired of making millions training Lennox Lewis to hold on to the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World. No, I'm just going to be good fans with you and Larry, and I'll be watching you guys. Thanks a lot. It was a great pleasure to have you with us. Larry Merchant, uh, a last word about the 130-pounders or 
a last word about another subject we have not touched, which is scoring controversies here in Las Vegas. Yeah, well, first, uh, let me apologize to Emmanuel for calling him a Vander. He didn't mind. In the race. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe a Vander minded. Um, well, the judges didn't come into play tonight, tonight obviously, and, and they haven't in, in any fight with Mayweather. But I had a conversation. Um, today and yesterday with Mark Ratner, the chairman of the commission here, that I thought I should report to you on. And that was about the scoring of that magnificent holy war we had here last month between Morales and Barrera. When a fighter like Barrera makes the effort he does and gets so little credit from one official, uh, something needs to be said. And uh, Dalby Shirley infamously had that fight uh, eight rounds to three going into the last round, having given Morales seven straight rounds, which means he gave him every close rounds, which strongly suggests some kind of agenda, conscious or otherwise. I asked Ratner about appointing a WBC official to a WBC fight, an official who, whose record shows that he customarily favors what we call the house fighter the fighter that the promoter and the money people want to see win the fight. And he said to me, he made a mistake that was a very poor scorecard, and he will not appoint him again to a big fight for a long time, nor will he appoint any Nevada official who is also a member of one of the sanctioning bodies, the other sanctioning bodies, to a fight in involving those sanctioning body championships. If he follows through, that would be an encouraging development. Indeed. Yeah. Yet another way of saying what we all said that night, which was that Marco Antonio Barrera got a raw deal in his tremendous match against Eric Morales. Well, we'll have a final word on what happened in the ring here in just a moment. Let's look ahead to some upcoming programs.